Coming up, Lexington police are called here to the 500 block of Kildare Court and they find a man with multiple gunshot wounds. With a week until Kentucky's primary, the presidential campaign trail is winding its way through the Commonwealth. Coming up, we'll take you inside Hillary Clinton's campaign event in Lexington. We have an enhanced risk of severe weather for today. What does that mean for you? I'm going to break that down for you coming up in just a few minutes. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. We're dealing with another day of off and on showers and storms this afternoon. But it could get rolling this evening. An enhanced threat of severe weather comes through later in the day. We've called a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day as we closely monitor the situation. Here's WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris. You know, I think it's a common misconception when you start to see those enhanced risks or the moderate risk or high risk come out from the Storm Prediction Center. If it's up Graded at all, everybody presumes that it's, it's talking about tornadoes. That's not what this is talking about. There is a small risk of tornadoes today. However, you're talking about damaging wind gusts 60 to 80 miles per hour. You might as well treat those like tornado warnings as these pass on by. But this is traveling just due to the northeast. So it's still back in western Kentucky, still several hours away. It looks like it's going to head into our region right around the timing I was talking about early this morning. I've adjusted that just a little bit, and I'm going to show you that in just a few minutes. But the storm impact right now is what we're going to be looking at damaging winds. Okay, so now I'll bump that up just a little bit. Large hail is going to be the next primary factor that we're going to be watching for. Flooding, not a major concern today. Tornadic activity, not a major concern today. However, they're all still here. I'm going to show you that updated timing forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Micah, thank you. And the storms that we're getting here today are expected to be nothing compared to what they've been dealing with in the Central Plains. Two dozen tornadoes left a trail of devastation across Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Iowa, flattening homes and killing at least two people. Manuel Borjorquez has the latest on the damage. Oh my God, that's the most violent motion I've, oh my God. This is the twister that decimated Garvin yeah. County, Oklahoma Monday. Oh no, there are the lines. Violent high speed oh winds God. ripped away everything oh in their path, including trees and electric poles. Forecasters declared a tornado emergency for communities in the track of the fast moving tornado. A 76 year old man was killed. Family members say he was on the phone with them when the storm hit. Lisa Buckner lives next door. Ran back to the cellar, walked down, and uh, started praying. Her house was one of several torn to pieces. In nearby Johnston County, another man was killed after a tornado snapped trees and damaged buildings. County Commissioner Roy Belvins called on a friend to help him search for the victim. And when he got there, he said he was still, thought he was still alive, but. Uh, it was bad. In Lincoln, Nebraska, hail and heavy rainfall pummeled entire neighborhoods while flash flooding stranded drivers. The same system that caused this destruction is now moving east with severe thunderstorms in the forecast for the central and southern plains and parts of the Mississippi Valley could see heavy rainfall and possible flooding. Manuel Bohorquez, CBS News, Winniewood, Oklahoma. And another storm system is expected to bring even more severe weather to parts of Oklahoma and Texas tomorrow. With more storms expected in the coming days here in Kentucky, you can get the latest forecast on your neighborhood at WKYT.com or by downloading the WKYT News app. Now let's switch from the weather to politics. Kentucky's primary is one week from today. And with the Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton inching closer to the nomination, she is hoping to pick up some much needed delegates here in the Commonwealth. Clinton is planning to meet with voters during stops in Louisville and Lexington today. WKYT's Mark Barber is live outside the Family Care Center on Red Mile Place, where Clinton is expected to arrive any minute. Mark? Good afternoon, Barbara. Hillary Clinton is expected to arrive here at the Family Care Center in the next 15 minutes or so to meet with the group of people that you see here. Some of the parents in the circle tell me that they're going to vote for Hillary Clinton no matter what. Their minds are already made up, but others here say that how they vote will really depend on what they discuss this afternoon. This campaign stop is only for the group of young working parents that were invited to be here. 
Clinton's campaign says that she plans on talking today about her proposals for child care. She wants to offer tax relief and federal subsidies to families who have to spend more than 10 percent of their income on child care. She also wants to expand the number of home visits that social workers make for children. Clinton would also give child care workers a raise. One of the young mothers that we spoke to in the past 10 minutes says she's a student at UK and she hopes Clinton will discuss her plans for health care because that is one of the most important issues for her this election. Because I feel like it's going to be difficult for once I get in the workforce and I have to pay for health care, um, whether I have a job with that offers health care or not, um, it's going to be expensive. Clinton is expected to speak to this small group of parents for about two hours before taking her campaign on to Louisville. Her only public event today will be at 6.15 tonight at Slugger Field in Louisville there. Now, of course, Clinton has seven more days to sway those undecided voters before Kentucky's primary. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. And Clinton also picked up a big endorsement while in the bluegrass. Former Kentucky Governor Steve Beshear announced this morning that he's supporting her for president. Meanwhile, Clinton's challenger, Bernie Sanders, is poised to win primaries in West Virginia and Nebraska today, but still trails far behind Clinton in the delegate count. Right now, Clinton has 93% of the delegates needed to clinch the nomination. Presumptive GOP nominee Donald Trump heads into today's contests unopposed after Ted Cruz and John Kasich ended their campaigns last week. A man is recovering this midday after being shot multiple times in Lexington. It happened just before 7 o'clock this morning at a home on Kildare Court. That's in the Hollow Creek neighborhood. The victim was taken to UK hospital with serious injury. WKYT's Mike Byer is near the scene with the latest on what police are calling a domestic violence case. Mike? Lexington police have been walking up and down the street talking with neighbors trying to get any additional information about this morning shooting. This is what police have gathered. They tell us this morning shooting is an isolated incident involving domestic violence. It happened shortly before 7 a.m. This is when police were called to the 500 block of Kildare Court, a little over a mile from New Circle Road. Officers tell us when they arrived on scene, they found a man lying in the front lawn of a home. Police say the man had multiple gunshot wounds. He was taken to UK hospital. Police Police tell us the man was conscious, but that his injuries are considered to be serious. Now, police tell us that man has an active domestic violence order against him. Investigators believe his former girlfriend shot him in self defense. Now, I've spoken with several neighbors who say this isn't the first time that they've seen police at this house. In Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. And charges are pending against the man who remains at the hospital right now. Police are hoping some very distinct clothing will help them catch a man who robbed a Lexington gas station early this morning. The man was covered from head to toe, wearing a Mardi Gras mask and pink socks on his hands when he held up the speedway on Paris Pike about 2 o'clock this morning. He was uh, covered uh, again uh, fully. Uh, Unable to be described by the people who were there. They also said he did not speak at all during this robbery. Instead, police say he pointed a gun at the clerk and made hand gestures to demand the money. Well, Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist is adjusting to his brand new home in Baltimore ahead of the Preakness stakes that are later this month. Nyquist is expected to have a light training schedule at Pimlico Parkway between now and the second leg of the Triple Crown. The undefeated Colt could face up to 13 rivals, including nine new challengers, in the race, which is set for May 21st. He'll then have three weeks to rest up for the Belmont Stakes in New York. Looks like he arrived in style. Well, the state of North Carolina is gearing up for a showdown with the federal government over its controversial restroom bill. We'll have the latest on two dueling lawsuits coming up on Kentucky's number one midday news. And also ahead, Kentucky native Johnny Depp is poking fun at his infamous dog smuggling apology in Australia. We'll tell you what off-color joke he made during a news tour for his latest movie, next on WKYT. Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. The legal battle between the Obama administration and the state of North Carolina over transgender public restroom access is escalating this midday. Two lawsuits have now been filed in the Tar Heel State over House Bill 2, which states that people have to use the restroom of the gender on their birth certificate and not the one they identify with. The U.S. Justice Department sued the state after the governor refused to change it. The state has also filed a lawsuit against the federal 
federal government, challenging the claim that the law is a civil rights violation. The Justice Department said some federal funding to the state could be taken away if the law is not changed. The White House wants Congress to step it up when it comes to fighting the Zika virus before mosquito season heats up. The Obama administration is asked for nearly $2 billion to fight the virus nearly two months ago. That has yet to gain approval on Capitol Hill. Lawmakers on both sides have agreed publicly that the virus is a real threat, but some Republicans argue that the full amount is not necessary because funding from the Ebola bill is already being transferred over to fight Zika. Well, Kentucky native Johnny Depp is mocking his deadpan apology for illegally taking dogs into Australia. During a press event in England for his new film, Alice Through the Looking Glass, Depp mocked the so-called War on Terrier incident. Last month, Depp and his wife released a video urging people to respect Australia's biosecurity after she pleaded guilty to sneaking the dogs into the country. Ever since the awkward footage has been the butt of many puns, and now Depp is getting in on the fun, saying, "Quote: I tried to kill them after Australia." Mm. Now he was kidding about the dogs, just Johnny being Johnny. Voters head to the polls in a couple of states. While the Democratic candidates battle for last-minute votes, the presumptive GOP nominee is headed to Capitol Hill looking for support. I'm Craig Boswell. That story coming up. That second round of rain has already moved on out and fallen apart. Now we're focused in on our main event that will come later on this afternoon off into the evening hours. I'm going to go over that forecast updated timing with that map coming up. Got a couple of showers out and about back toward the east and northeast seeing that just kind of fall apart. There was a line of showers and thunderstorms. But as I discussed earlier this morning, that the main energy is well back toward the west. So as long as this gets farther and farther away from the main line and the main energy that is, well, it just falls apart because it loses that strength. So that's why you see it absolutely. Yeah, it's nothing impressive right now. So let's don't really pay attention to that. Let's focus in on this. Look at the spin right through here. Check this out. Yeah, you see that? That is the upper level energy is just going to be punching on through later on, late in the afternoon, off into the evening hours. This is actually moving right up uh, the county or the state borders of Indiana and also sitting there in Kentucky. We'll see this spark off some thunderstorms already seeing that bulk of it right there, but really spark off some storms in throughout the next several hours into our region. Remember, it's late in the day, okay? So 70s right now. It actually feels pretty good if you're trying to get out and about before the storms come, grocery stores, anything you have going on, you'll want to do it now because now is the time that you take a big long break. It's a good three to about five hour break before those main storms come punching on in here. It's a nice feel, nothing really to worry about as we travel off through the most part of the rest of the afternoon. The rest of the afternoon, I'd say through 5 p.m., you're talking about just a small rain chance. Once we get after 5 p.m., that's when things get a little bit dicey. We're talking about 6 p.m. to about midnight. That is your best bet to actually pick up on some severe weather. We're pretty confident we will see a few isolated severe storms slide on in here, and that'll bring in damaging winds being our number one main player out of this system. However, still can't rule out large hail. We cannot rule out an isolated tornado or two. Those are still relatively low, but something to watch out for. I would say it goes damaging winds being number one priority. Number two is the large hail, and then you're talking about tornadic activity. So it's very low for those tornadoes, but they're still in there. Still got to watch that. But that goes off through the night and in through tomorrow morning, it fades away. Let's talk about the storm impact. It's getting on up there. I bumped that up just a little bit above the moderate for those high winds. We're talking anywhere from 60 to 80 miles per hour with these storms. You mean you might as well think of these thunderstorm warnings when they do pop up. Later on today, think of those as tornado warnings, okay? Large hail still there, right around moderate. Flooding, not a main concern today. Could be an isolated spot here or there, but really the next few days as these rounds of showers and thunderstorms add up, that's when flooding really comes into effect. Tornadic activity still, like I said, it's relatively low. Let's talk about your updated timing. This is what you want to see. Turn to the screen, check this out. We're at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. there across the 71 corridor. 64 as you travel over toward Louisville, go down 65. That's the area where you can see 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And I would lean more towards 7 p.m. for Frankfurt. And then we slide off into the bluegrass 
And to the north and down toward the southwest where the Cumberland Parkway is, you're talking about the Cumberland, uh, Lake Cumberland down south and southwest, 7 p.m. to about 10 p.m. when these storms push on in here. And then you're going to be seeing 10 p.m. to about 1 a.m. Yeah, it's going to be a late night or it's going to be a noisy night for a lot of us, especially the farther east and southeast that you get. That's the updated timing on this. Okay, let's go through your seven day forecast and what you can expect. Uh, tomorrow, we're still talking about more storms in the forecast. Thursday, we're going to do it all over again. Today, Wednesday, and Thursday, those are three consecutive days with at least, at least a marginal risk of severe storms. So, isolated chances the next couple of days, guys. But today, tonight, yeah, it's perfect timing or bad timing, whichever way you want to look at it. We actually have a big event for our weather watchers, uh, which a lot of us will actually be in a theater watching Twister. And we have a big event coming up at 7 p.m. That's downtown at the uh, Kentucky Theater. As it starts at 7 p.m., 7.30, we're actually doing the showing of Twister. And it's mm -hmm. all free. You can sign up online on WKYT. Dot com. So check that out. We'd love to see you down there. Should be a lot of fun. And uh, like you said, the timing is interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Imitating right. life, I hope not. All right. Okay. Keep Thank it you. here on WKYT News. Big awards for the Wildcats softball team. And a big return for the NBA's best player, Dave Baker's next report. And checking stocks as we head to break this afternoon. We'll see what the numbers are doing. And all the major market indicators way up at midday. The job Rachel Lawson has done as softball coach at Kentucky, nothing short of remarkable. This year, a school record for SEC wins, the number two seed in the conference tourney, four players getting postseason honors, and now Lawson in America's toughest softball league, SEC Coach of the Year. In her ninth season at the Hellman Lexington, Lawson has taken the Wildcat softball program to new heights every year, including this season where she became the first coach in program history to eclipse 300 wins as head coach. In addition to winning her 300th game at Kentucky early this season, she also surpassed 100 career SEC wins, 400 career wins all this season. The winningest coach in program history has not only led UK to its first ever appearance in the Women's College World Series, four NCAA Super Regionals the last five, but UK's Kelsey Nunley, seen here, won her 20th game of the season on Sunday. She's the SEC Pitcher of the Year and the first cat to be first team all SEC since 2013. Abby Cheek named to the SEC All Freshman Team. Seniors Macy Steed and Christian Stokes were named to the All SEC Defensive Team. Cats open the SEC tourney as the two seed Thursday against Mississippi State. And Cameron Whitaker officially introduced as the new head coach at Northern Kentucky University a short time ago. Whitaker spent just one season with the Wildcats and left to be a head coach. The Harrison County native is taking over the Norris program, coming off a 19 and 14 record and its 33rd straight winning season. Golden State Steph Curry. Oh my gosh. There was some chirping about whether or not he was healthy, but guess what? Last night he came back, first game since April 24th, after spraining his right knee. He missed his first nine three pointers, but then when his team needed him the most, he was unstoppable. In his first game back since that knee injury, 40 points, including an NBA record 17 in overtime. Golden State wins it 132-125 in overtime to take a 3-1 lead in the West semifinals. The Associated Press also reporting that later this week, Curry will be named the league's MVP for a second straight season. Tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, former basketball Wildcat Mark Krebs now with CN2. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. Guys, that's a look at sports on this Tuesday. Okay, Dave, thank you very much. And there's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. The NAACP rallied outside of Lexington High School today. Find out why. Coming up at 1230, we are live in Lexington, where Hillary Clinton is campaigning hard in the Bluegrass State a week before the primary. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $150 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $40 million.